Good morning, Jay. Hello, Ellen. Um, so last week we, we took a slight detour because we had to set up a machine. Um, I think we're going back on here, but now we have to remember two weeks ago. I don't remember two weeks ago. What do you remember? <laughs> well, we can look at history. But one thing I do remember is we got to the point where there was a, a list of Sudoku solver steps. Oh, yeah. That we apply in the loop. So I think that felt like an accomplishment. That definitely feels like it. According to this, we did some refactoring. Okay, that's not terribly <laughs> insightful. Lots of refactoring. What are we refactoring around? Show me the diffs. Can I just like see the diffs for the entire thing? View details. There's no compare the whole. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's go take a look. Did we leave ourselves Here. a note like a to do? Oh, maybe we did. Uh, prepare lookup structures. Oh, we got rid of that. Okay, it doesn't really tell us much. To do, no to do. Be somewhere no else. All right. Well, in that case, um, there's a couple of things that are still really weird that I thought would be good to take care of. I remember we still have applesauce, mm -hmm. uh, and I That's remember true. we still have bit masks in play a lot. Yeah. Uh, both of those would be things that'd be nice. Let's start with applesauce. We got yeah, we yeah, have applesauce two and then applesauce three. Those are some long-lived applesauce. It's going bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How, how many do we have here? Just two types. So where is applesauce two being used? It looks like it's just in try to find pairs of digits in the same row and then remove them from colliding cells. Uh, so let's go to there. So we do this pull out of that, which gives us a list of applesauce twos. Um, yeah, I think it doesn't escape the current function and it could become an anonymous type again. Okay, let's let's do that, see what happens. Is that a thing that this knows how to do? Uh, okay, maybe if you just like delete that, <laughs> does that work? That that actually, I'm so wanting this to work. <laughs> it looks like it's working, and then I guess we would delete this file. It, it, well, so now is applesauce unused? It still looks like it has one reference. In its own equals method. Okay, so then um, this class is unused we can delete it should i do this in two steps so one of them is to yeah switch let's back do to the, the one okay. size step that is uh is um, uh, and now we have a remove dead code sure what the right button is nope not that one <laughs> Uh, is it here? Safe to leave. Safe to leave. All fails. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, that's one applesauce taken away. Uh, let's go check our second applesauce. Or uh, where is this being used? I bet we can do the same thing here. Let's find out. So it's interesting that we might have, must have split this code differently at one point. Um, but now we can just do this. I'll delete this going somewhere else. Okay. Right click and save delete. So I definitely like this. Like applesauce wasn't great and it was definitely a temporary like putting something on credit card. And it's nice to know you can just delete the debt. So that, that's always nice. I'm gonna bring up my chat window just in case somebody says something. All oh right. yes. Thank you.
All right, that's it for apples. Sauce. What is the plural? Apple sauces apple or sauces. apples? You don't you don't pluralize the apple part. Can you have multiple apple sauces? I guess you could, like a cinnamon mm. apple sauce and a chunky apple sauce. And you can also have from different kinds of apples. Sauce. So you can have oh, like yeah. a Granny Smith, and you can have a crab apple sauce. Yeah. yeah. So that would be apples sauce. We're refactoring. No, All I right. still feel like it would be apple sauces. Uh, but if you mix them together, different that's made from multiple. And different sauces. One sauce apples, made from two sauces. kinds of apples. Yeah. This is why I do programming and not English. <laughs> <laughs> programming has to follow some kind of rules all the time. All right. So that no more applesauce or any all other right. fruit. Um, um, so the next thing that would be really nice. So this is this looks like it's pretty straightforward right now. This code right here. Go to the bottom of this. Is there anything else? There isn't. Um, okay. So then the next thing is let's go look at our solvers really quick. Okay, that's not big enough for me to care. Let's go back. Let's try the next one. Okay, that is big enough for me to care. Oh, you mentioned masks before too. Yep, and masks going out would be something I'd love to get out. Um, and yeah, this is th that piece of code right there I don't like. What's the third one? I don't like that code either. And let's go check the fourth one. I'm not really a fan of that either. All right. Uh, ugh. Seem to like that one less. <laughs> uh, but let's not start with that quite yet. Let's go back to the first icky one. And we'll see what that does. Oh, the first icky one. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we have some for loop here, and then we have some for loop here. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to find a number which can only appear in one place in a column block. Okay, and we're definitely using a mask. Um. So, how, how do you want to uh, take a look at slicing this up? By the way, this all goes through things. So, it looks like this first part creates something, and then the second part does something with the thing that's created. Right? Yeah, like it, it gets the candidates. Where, is candidates something that, where, where does candidates come from? That's what was generated up here. <laughs> it's a list of ints. Okay, and if we go down. We also, we have a random number generator used in a bunch of places that don't need to be random. Uh, yeah, but that's gonna change behavior. Yeah. Let's not deal with that yet. Um, right, because look at this, it's just like saying, if anything is found, grab a random index and do something with it. All right. In fact, so I've got candidate add here, nothing gets removed. So you, you could, um, you could imagine it, the soon as it finds one match yeah. using that. It just stops. Yeah. Yeah. But that would change behavior. And I, th I think we want to stay at the behavior doesn't change modality. Um, yeah. But you know, this idea that like the rule that refactoring doesn't change behavior is measured within a scope. And so um, right now, this program shows its intermediate states as it's solving the puzzle. And if we got rid of the randomness, that that would change, but the solved puzzle would not change. Yes. So within the scope of does it solve the puzzle, yeah, yeah. it's unchanging, but within the scope of intermediate steps, it is changing. But it still comes to the fact of is that behavior like, like it, if we do this, we are changing behavior, right? Um, observable behavior, because this prints to a log. And 
that conversation, while it would be interesting to have, I think it's still best if we just operate as if we can't. Okay. But I agree with you. Like, I would love to have it. Like, if this was a real product, I would love to have that conversation. It feels like the way it's solving it right now is not ideal and, and is overly constrained. Sure. Um, but it's just a conversation I prefer not to have right now. So I think it's better to act as if we can't have it. Okay. If I was um, trying to make this code as good as I could, I think I would stop linearizing the arrays and deal with pairs of coordinates. I mean, yeah, coordinate pairs. Look at this. Like, you can see lines 92 through 96, 95. Like, we have four things that belong together. Mm -hmm. um, and rather than have a list of these four things, we have four lists. Mm -hmm. I'd like to change that. Yeah. In database world, they talk about like normalizing and denormalizing data. I think that's this. This thing, yeah. But then the next thing is what's going on here with the, because here we do a set, a puzzle dot set value, row, yeah. column, digit. And then we have row, column, digit here. What's the description? We don't know what the description is. It's stuff. It's mainly just being used right now to print out something. Um, description comes from group descriptions. Yeah. Do we have a concept of row, column, and like, do we have a cell concept? Can we do a puzzle dot set value cell or something like that? So we have we do this. have the concept of a cell. It's a column and row and a value. Is that what you want? I, I kind of do. So let's uh, let's let's do an intermediate set here. So um, on one oh one and a half here set um, yeah, new cell, row, column, value, which is digit, yeah. Hold on, hold on to that. And can we do, is there a puzzle.setValue cell? Is that a thing? So. I thought we were making that, but I guess not. You want to add well, that? Yes, I do. And I guess for right now, just set value, sell that row value, yeah. But can we go into that method? Okay, so you do have to sort of do that at the moment. That's fine. Uh, yeah, commit that. And then let's go back here okay and then board is numbers what do we need line 100 at all i would imagine we don't yeah so let's delete that and do we need candidates mask that i could imagine we do but i don't think we do Good, so let's get rid of that. Because now this is being held in the puzzle. Um, all right, so next. So we have these three things that could definitely go together, row, column, digit. I'd like to put that into a list of cells. So let's start by creating a list of cells at the top. Nice. Good list.
Center, and then scroll down to where we have that candidates. We have three things with candidates. I basically want to delete all three of them. Uh, scroll down. Scroll down more. Yep. So, um, candidate row indexes, ca candidates, column indexes, and candidates. I want to delete all three of those. So, do you want to delete the variable and then? I want to delete the variable and see what the red does. Yep. Okay. So go give, go to where my first red is. And here, yep, perfect. We're gonna say cell dot add and new cell cell group cell. Cell. Okay, cell group is the row. Oh, weird. And then column is index and row. That's so weird. And, and then values. value yeah. is digit. Okay. And I bet you I can't just copy and paste this everywhere else, but I'm going to anyway. All right. Row is now index in call. And call is now cell group. And digit is still that. Okay, I, I kind of get what it's doing. Yeah, all right, and then let's do that the next place. Uh, that That's doing like some math on it. I hate math. Okay, row is that's this one. row. And it just stays the, the same. Stay the same. So now instead of okay. candidates, it's cell. Uh, we still need the cells here. But here we can just say this. cell. Yeah, that whole thing disappears. And you can just now do a cells. Uh, no, we haven't gotten cell yet. So you need to get a cell. So var cell equals uh, cells dot get element at. That's all weird. Yeah, that do that. Um, delete that. Where it says digit is going to be cells dot digit cells dot row value cells dot row cell dot column is this gonna pass I think so I would expect it to yeah so that's our that was our large refactoring there to uh, <laughs> it's still supported by tests I think you can take the bang bang out. It is supported by tests, but it's you know, I'm thinking more than eight lines, but that's for features. Definitely and bugs. more than eight lines, but that's for a feature slice. Yeah. Okay. Eight lines, seven lines. Oh. <laughs> Used to be 12, I don't know. <laughs> There's like shrinkage or inflation or deflation or something like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's risk inflation. Um, Okay, so this is definitely better. Um, this group descriptions thing, I don't like having that as a separate thing either. So what I'd like to do, descriptions is just a string. Mm -hmm. so and it's saying how it was found. Found, yeah. So let's, let's pull, first of all, let's grab the thing that we put into descriptions and just pull it out as a variable. Call it description. Oh, can we rename cells to cell to candidate cells or cell candidates or something like that? Sure. Okay. Which uh, candidates? How about what? What is this whole method called? Try to find a number which can only appear in one place in a row. It should be or column or block. Yeah. So how about we call this cells? cells that are the only option it's not quite great but it's my real concern is that we lost a little bit of an idea uh not necessarily on purpose this candidate idea cells which can... 
it's not cells that can only have one number. It's cells. It's the cells where one number only. How do I say this? It's not a cell that can only be a one. It's the only cell that can be a one. Which are the only which can be a... Mm. Cells which are the only possible in a block. <sighs> Not a great name. Honest and complete, though. Yeah. Better than cells. Yeah. And I feel like it's better than the name that was there before. It captures all of the meaning that was there before and a little more. Yeah, all the meaning and a little more. I like that. Okay, so then um, let's go and deal with this description thing. In fact, what I'd really like to do is <coughs> I'd like to split. This is weird. Cell block, cell column. We divide by th three, but then we times by three? Wait, what? So we could inline this use and simplify? Yeah, in, inline that loop use. All right, can we do can we there? Say, do inline. And now we can just, that's just cell group, right? So that inline both uses. Uh, I don't completely object to that, but. I, I do. I don't like that. OK. So we'll do it let's, by hand. So we'll drop that there. And then that's cell group. But what is cell group? Uh, cell group is. Wait, cell group is the row? Divided by three times three. This way. Yeah. Oh, but nope, it does Modulus... not. Modulus. Wait, what do you mean it does not? It's trying to throw away the last digits in base three. Oh, we should undo that last undo change. The, undo this, yeah. Okay, but okay, so let's deal with a different issue I want to deal with. Um, and all the places where we say new cell, can you give me a cell on 56? No, just cell, cell. You, you can't var it because it has no... I'm not sure what you're asking me to do. I literally type capital cell, lowercase cell, semicolon. Okay. Then on 61, can we take that new cell and set it to cell? Sort of doing like a extract. Uh, okay, can you do that? Yes, you can. And then can we just add the cell at the, oh no, we can't because it doesn't necessarily add a cell. All right, undo that. That was a stupid idea. Are you thinking if any of these got hit, then that's when it gets added to the collection? Yeah, but I don't like, I don't, I, it's, the code is worse. Yeah, I, I agree that the code is worse. I think you can write if, we oh. can do that, but I, I don't like it. it. This is worse. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, but then what I would like to do is I'd like to group this cell and description, right? So the cells which are only possible in a block, if we go up to the top of that, can we make that instead of a list of cells, a list of a tuple of cell and, and string? That is not too bully. There we go. That should work as soon as we so in in the place where we do the group descriptions for right now, uh, take that and pull it into a local variable called description. Sure. 
Arts. And then pop that into the add. Doesn't quite work like that. No, it's like tuple dot something. Create. And it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be cell comma description. I'm not sure that programming is exhausting. And I think you have a misplaced semicolon. Yeah. Why isn't this the whole thing a refactoring? This, yeah. So we're going to do that a lot more times. Um, now we know how. So yeah. Do block create. And then let's just use parallel um, assignment to pull it out of the thing. So if we go down to where this is being called down here. Ah, this is not valid. You're, you're failing. Scroll down. Here. We're, we're there where it says description. Just delete that whole line. And where it says cell, say cell comma description. Maybe you need... Var, I, I think you can just do it like that. Maybe you need the double var. Is this a thing that C++, C Sharp allows? Or... There we go. There, yeah. Okay, there we go. And now know to interpret your ah as what you're doing is invalid, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I was trying to express. <laughs> Okay, and then so this first part now has a very clear thing if we scroll up to the top, which is, um, yeah, because we only, so if we take lines 12 through, uh, I don't know, the bottom of that four line. Here. Yeah, that is now get cells which are only possible in a block. Get cells which are the only possible in a block. There we are. Okay, now this method is much nicer. We get them and then we go through and we do our stupid stuff. But that's what our program does, so like that's as clean as that's sort of gonna get. Um down here, this still is not nice enough for me. So let's go deal with this piece. Before we dig into that more, what really is our goal? Like we could spend a lot more hours cleaning up the code. How are we deciding? Oh, that this is the thing? It was yeah. just too messy. Okay. I, I know that's not like a great thing. Uh, I would love to get the mask out of this. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to surface the mask, I believe. Right, because look at this. Like, this right now is going through, right? Like this is going through in, um, like, like we're using the ints, we're using the digit cells, we're doing mathy weird stuff. Um, I don't like any of this. Um, it's going from one to nine and then it's going from, then it's making a mask. And then, like, I, I'd like to get the mask out of here, and I would like to get this. Like, this, this for loop here, what it's trying to say is um, go through a given constraint and find where the option is only one. And it's doing this in a really icky way right in a very confusing so, way like I'm reading this code and I know what each line does and I'm still not really following the flow of it yeah right so if we want to get rid of masks which like I'm inclined to agree with because I, I hate it yeah. totally uh, that's coming out of here Yes. And 
how many places is that being used throughout the program? Excellent question. Let's find out. Double click on candidates. No, 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 not throughout the program, throughout the method. Okay, well, the good news is it's only used in five places throughout the program. So I feel a little bit better about that. Okay. But the reason I'm asking is if we eliminate bit twiddling from one function, but it still exists elsewhere in the program, I don't feel like that's very much progress. Oh, that's absolutely. Unless we think we're going to eliminate all of them. Well, I mean, when you eliminate one, you make it easier to eliminate the others. Yeah. The last thing I would want to do is try to do all five at once. No, I, I agree with that, but I don't know. We, in our overall arc, like I don't think we really have a clear definition of done for what we're trying to accomplish. No, we don't. And I, I'm trying to ask whether eliminating the bit twiddling is inside our definition of done. Well, there's there's the other thing in here that bothers me, which is the rows, the columns, and the blocks. That concept doesn't exist in the Sudoku board. I don't believe. We can check it. And where do you want me to go? Uh, we go to Sudoku board. Yeah, so, oh no, here, wait, oh wait, yeah, so here, what do we have? We have set value, keep going, print stuff, board is numbers, four numbers, clone. Yeah, like I would like to be able to say, get the rows. We use that in multiple places. It's obviously a domain thing, mm -hmm. but it's not here anywhere. Right? Yeah, that um, makes sense. And so both of these two things seem to be asking to come out. If we, if we go back to where we were, that solver thing, which is just too big and ugly. Um, right? So if we look at our four from lines 36 through, grab that whole piece. Bigger. Yeah. Extract it. Yes. Extract I it. I, think I, I don't like it already. But yeah, extract, uh, no, include the mask. Mm, yeah. So I don't like, so this is going through all the digits and checking them, which I do like that. Um, I don't like this passing candidate mask. I wish it was passing the puzzle instead. Yeah, that's easier to do. It only reads it. Yeah. But but undo that for now because I'm still very unhappy with this. Also, it's mutating state and the call that you're passing. So let's... Is there a concept in the list of add if null, if not null? No, but not in C sharp. I mean, People write that in libraries a lot. And then remove the nulls. Mm -hmm. um, that'd be nicer just not to add it. But all right. Um, um, so we can totally bring this in closer to where it's used. I mean, just doing. Yeah, I like that. That should help. Okay. And then it's only being used in that one place. Okay, so now let's, let's check this. Candidates mask returns. So what do we really want to ask here? I Okay, I don't understand your question, but going back to what you were saying before, are, would do you want this extracted method? Like if we extract another method out here, do you want it to yield here and then not yield 
if it like is that is that the goal? Oh. I do like that. Do that. Um Okay, hun, so do this. Um How do I how do I set this up for refactoring? Yeah, that's I kind of do want that. Um Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to do it in tiny refactoring steps. I think I would start with extract method here. Okay. Uh, oh, let's just run through it once and see what we think. Yeah. And then I would get rid of that. That and have it return that. This not add range. No, just have it. Sure. And then but each of these become a yield. Return. Yeah. Is it possible to not yield return or to do a, a return that doesn't return anything though? Well, the, this does that. Okay. Like this can yield zero, one, two, or three things okay. given as implementation, or as many as it needs to. It's in a loop, so it can yield works? as many as it needs to. That works. I like it. Okay. Do you want to do it a little bit smaller steps? No. Like we extracted the method without. We extracted the method and, yep. And moved it into a much more functional paradigm. I like that what? a lot. Can we give this a little bit better name? Um, so this is find cells which are only possible in a block four, and then you're passing a four, four a digit. Longer. Yeah, longer is probably better. Probably. That's how programming works. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So now, let's go down to where that candidate's mask is. That's the question. I, I hate the way this is asking the question. So right here, where it says, if candidate's row mask and mask is. So what I really want to ask of the puzzle right now, so for right now, let's just sketch code above this. Uh, so 62 and a half. No, no, yeah, it's good. I want to say if, um, is candidate what am I trying to ask? Is it possible? Is it not possible? It's like puzzle dot is candidate. You're trying to ask this question. I'm trying to ask that question, but I don't know what that question is. I can't articulate that question very well. That's what applesauce is for. Is applesauce. So can we extract this as a method? Mm. Just wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So what's row state index? Nine That's, times cell group plus indexing group. Okay. So can you inline that on line 63? Should do all of them? Or each only use them one place? Then probably, yes. If we, okay. Uh, I, I don't think I, I want to inline that one. I think I want to bring it down to where it's used. I'm totally comfortable with that. See those test pass. So are we looking for this? Basically that. To become a method on puzzle? Yes, but okay, but now what is cell group and indexing group? 
So what's cell group? Let's start with that. Is this row and column? Times nine. So that is row. So th this is passing. Yeah. We're going to do a thing. Okay. Cut, cut line 57 and put it back with a if a puzzle dot um, is a, is possible value. That's a shitty name, but whatever. And you're going to pass it. Or you is, va is value possible? You wanted to return this, right? Uh, yeah, we haven't defined the thing yet. But yes, go back. Is value possible is the name of the thing. And it's going to take um, a row and a column. You say so. <laughs> and, and a value? And a digit, yeah. That's a cell. And then, so where does row come from? I think it comes from row number count. Nope, that's what we're increasing. It's index in row. That's index in row. And the next one is going to be column, index in column. All right, and let's go create that method. Uh, there's something I feel icky about in this. It was kind of wrong to me, but. But it doesn't look like it's using these things. So we have a candidates thing. I don't know what you're saying. No, if you go back to puzzle, yeah, you have this puzzle. What does that line actually say? Get candidates. Okay, so we don't want to do the board. We just want to say get candidates. No, no dot board. And then, what what is candidates? Candidates is just a thing here. So inside of here, if we go back, we want to say candidates dot is value possible. Pass it index. I feel like what I'm doing right now is the right direction, but the wrong way. How do you feel about nuking this and trying to refactor to it? Instead of just re rewrite it. Okay. That is that is J for yes. You are doing the thing wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you what feels wrong about it. Um, I think that we're asking three different questions here. We're saying in the current row, is there a single, whatever? Yes. In the current column, is there a single whatever? And in the current block, which is a three by three, and those are three different questions. That, yes, but I actually think we're asking the same question. I think we're asking, is the candidate possible in this cell? I, th I think we're asking that in all three, but what we're doing is we're converting the... We're converting sort of the index to figure out where the cell is. So if, if we say, like, if we, if we look here... Right, where we have cell group and index in cell. It's saying we have the group. So we have we have the first row, and now I'm getting the first cell in that row. I mean that's the thing that I'm really. Uh, this thing right here, the cell. Go to cell for a second. 
Cell class? Cell class. Okay. Does cell class have a to index? It does. And a from index. Okay, so now let's go back and I mean that would work regardless of how we do it, but um I think what's happening right here, no, wait, okay. Um, so, okay, so here we have a cell group and we have a row number count, a row index. And then the second one is index and row. So what I want to do is Okay, well, the way I want to do this is so weird. Um, let's set a five minute timer and explore what I'm about to do because it feels super weird. Does that sound like something to, to do? Sure. Okay, so let's write a unit test. Write a unit test. Yep, because I, I don't know. I have such a weird where I want to go with this and from where it is that it feels too too goofy for me. So I, I got to do a unit test. So we're going to write uh, the test is going to be called get rows. And basically all it's going to do is it's going to say Sudoku board dot get rows. New. New. Uh, actually, this can just be static. Uh, can it be static? No. Well, let's, let's say that it can be for right now. Um, is there already a get rows? No, there isn't. No. Okay. And then hold on to the result of this and let's create and then approve it. Verifile. Yep. Uh, verify all will definitely work. Okay. So then in here, let's it go create the method. One of these, right? Uh, it needs a, a label after it. So just empty string for now. Um, a row would be a great string. Um, so this is going to return an array or yeah, an enumerable, I guess. of an I enumerable of cell. And then basically let's do a, a for loop. And this is going to be, the first one is going to be row. And the next one is going to be column. And then, yeah, your yield break is great. Yield return. So we need nested. That is a really good point. And here, we're going to add a new cell of row, column, and zero. And then we're in Britain. Yeah. So I think that should give us our rows. It's going to fail because we've never approved this. But let's go take a look at the approval. Beautiful. Great. Uh, let's fix that. Um. Uh, there's a verify all that does a string printer. So the label first row is going to be first. So go to this is going to be no in, yeah, in front of that. Yeah, we need a row as the very first. That that string text goes to the very beginning of verify all. So weird. Yeah, row result. This goes to list dot. Uh, I have a two better string or something. I uh, know 
just do a, do a list dot to to readable string I think yes there we are and run that awesome uh, let's make it so cell has a useful to string E binding is not what I want. Tools, no, engines for sharper. Edit. One for sharper already put this there. Generate code. Formatting numbers. And sure. Sure. Good enough for now. So we have. Zero zero. Uh, no, it's it's unreadable. Fix the two string. For right now, I just want a parenthesis, a uh, column, a row, comma column. And I actually want row, comma column because. Yeah, try that for now. So zero 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 one. So the first row, the column goes up. The next row, the column. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. Okay. So prove that. This rows. It sure. And now let's go use that in the thing. And here's what I'm thinking we can do, which is right there where we do candidate mask on line 57. I think what we can do is replace that with Sudoku board dot get rows inside of the square brackets, inside of the square brackets. Yeah, this. No, we still need the mask, just uh, the square brackets. Just, just square. Here we're going to say Sudoku board dot rows, get rows, and then first we get the, the first we get the group number, which is going to be cell group, and then we get the, so if we go to the next one, we get the um, indexing group. And then we do a dot to no Definitely a little lost. So so we get the rules, and then we de-index the cell group, and then we de-index it. Why is that element at sure here? That element at here. Yeah, that's um, I'm liking that less already. Um, and then dot to index yeah and why is it complaining we lost our square bracket there i believe this will work all right well we did that and our timer didn't go off so yay or our timer hey. didn't go off <laughs> we didn't i just didn't ever hear <laughs> <laughs> uh, time boxes for the win okay but that, so Let's let's commit that. <laughs> Sometimes you get worse before you get better. Oh, what is this? Absolutely get worse before you get better. However, this Sudoku board dot get rows, pull that out as a local variable and move it up to line forty four. Or actually move it up even higher to like outside the for loop. And then this rows that element at cell group, move that out and up above the for loop. Uh, above the first note, just the first one. Yep, pull that out and put it on line 54. Yep. Okay. And so here, what we're saying is for this cell, 
check if this is zero. Okay. I want to commit this, but I don't know what to call it. Uh, pull out row. Oh, that, that's the whole thing. Uh, okay. I'm going to call it. All right. So now I want to basically clone 42 and do a get columns. Should be no changes. What's going on? Columns. You want to test for this as well? Uh, I do and I don't. Uh, yeah, but let's write a test. It's better to write a test. Because I'm definitely going to want to test for the next one because that just seems weird. You have a double S? In both places. Create that method. Basically, it's going to look exactly the same as the other one, but we're going to swap the rows and columns. Well, this seems like a recipe for programming error right here. This is what I would get wrong. This is why we have the test. Uh, it, yeah. All right, give that a run. And it's going to fail, but does it fail for the right reasons? Just run it manually, and we can just move it over with the diff tool. Run. There we go. All right, so now the co row columns, the row is changing, but the column is staying the same. So that's exactly what we want. That's different. Kill orphaned. Really? Yeah. And then if we go back, we should be passing. So commit that. And now let's use it as well. And we should start to see stuff going away. So here. So do you want me to duplicate this line and make a column version of it? Yep, exactly. All right, type it. I can't tell if my keyboard modifiers are stuck or if. CPU bound or what? Copy. Nope. I can't edit anything. What's going on? That's where we can find. Okay, so stuff is working. Our column equals columns dot element at. Also cell group. Also cell group. Yep. So it's measuring the row, the column, and the first block all at the same time. Yep. And they don't have to be at the same time. It's just yes, they do. There's not nine of them. To be at the same time, but they are. And that's why this, this method is super icky right now. And right now, we're just separating that, so we're not hitting the mask at the moment. 
but we're making it so the mask is much more addressable. Because right, it's now clear what we're trying to ask. Good, so commit that. Let's see, is, is the test looping? So we, sh we should start to get, no, we don't, because we still need all this stuff to do. So the next part that it is, is where I think like the interesting thing occurs is the git block. So our uh, in crunch is stuck in a loop for some reason. Disable it and re-able it. Have you tried turning it off and on? Three times. All right, so you want to do the same thing here now with block? Well, yeah, we're writing a test on this one. Because that this is the one that I think is actually tricky. No, 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 no. Write the test. It'll be the same. I'm going to have just this one. Oh, whatever. Yeah, you're, you're totally going to write that, but after we write the test. So you can clone this whole thing if you want. Yeah. And this is going to be blocks. And this is the part where we now have to pay attention to his stupid math. Just to be super clear, he's not the one that's stupid. It's the math that's stupid. It's the math. <laughs> the fact that he could write this shows a lot of... <laughs> A lot of attention to horrible code uh, and complicated mathematical stuff. So let's, yeah, let's copy that, I guess. Because we need it to come in the same order. So now let's do a double for loop. And it's going to go over cell group, and it's going to go over indexing group. Huh. Yeah, so the, the I is going to be cell group, and the J is going to be indexing group. And then move those three lines into the for loop. You're going to need your list on the outside and the yield return on the surrounding this for loop. So uh, now above, yeah. And then yield return at the end. And then inside this result.add, you're going to say result.add cell dot from cell dot from index of block state index. It was nice of us to write that. It was super nice of us to write that. Why is that unhappy? Because oh, cell has a value, it's yeah. not just a position. Um, okay. And now if you run this, whatever it gives us is right. <laughs> Guarantee it. Well, just because it's what, what the other code did. So lock it down. And there's I'm so tempted to clean up this method, but we actually don't need to. It's encapsulated enough that I can just squint and pretend it doesn't exist. The checkbox that we checked is killing this process. Uh, see, <clears throat> we checked the checkbox saying you can kill orphan processes from now on. Yeah. And they go away uh, moments after the test runs. Yeah, that checkbox probably shouldn't have been hit. Orphaned. Ah. The orphan is lost. <laughs> Who owns that dialogue? It's, is it Visual Studio or is it Resharper? It's got to be Resharper. Because you're running in Resharper right now. Uh, okay, yeah, well, yeah, that's fine. Just, I don't want to solve just, this problem. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, fine. Just rename. Get blocks approved. It exists. Okay, but why it doesn't? The receipt doesn't show up because it's not in your. But it's get blocks. So if you go open get blocks. Okay. 
Yeah, and then rename that. So it says zero one two, and then it goes to the next row and does zero one two. Yeah, that's well, cool. Yeah, that part doesn't surprise me at all. The question is, what does the second one start at? Row zero, column three. Okay, that makes sense. And then row zero, column. So it goes, it goes like you would expect from sort of left to right across the board. Then jumps down three, does it again. Then jumps down three, does it again. Yeah. Yes, because the tests are running. Cut down. All right, everything is falling apart, but we're almost out of time, and I, I don't really yeah. want to fix all the things. Fair enough. So, did you save that file? Struggling with saving files. It's in advanced. Just, just open received. It's fine. Just, just go with me. I'll, I'll walk you through. No, no. Open the receive file again. Yeah, get blocks That's received. Right. Select everything, copy it. Select everything, <laughs> copy it. Open the approved. Select everything, paste. Save. Test should be passing. I think tests are all passing. I think so too. But what's going on? Like, is it stop the loop and re execute it? I think it's. And Crunch is just keeps uh, looping for some reason. Yeah. And I don't know why. It's getting caught on the receive file. But if we um, run in Resharper, I'm all will pass. Totally good with that. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, do you want to use it first? Nope. I want to commit it. Okay. Created yeah. non usable code. Non-used code. Create blocks. Get blocks. We have a, a change in product code. We do. Maybe just white space. Oh no no, Sudoku oh. board. That that should be okay. changed. Cool. Create blocks. And now let's use those blocks in here. So oh, we're zero rows. This. Yep. We have to create the blocks first up on 43. All right. And then here, that's going to become just blocks. Block, 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 block. No S. Dot to index. Yeah, that should pass. Good. Commit that using blocks. And now this whole thing cleans up considerably. What did you have in mind? Uh, basically delete how oh, why can't we why can't we uh i want to delete row no, number count block number count oh no that we need yeah those are the results those are the results index and row though i totally want to delete that why can't i delete that delete that being used here Uh, okay. I guess we need that. Wait, why do we need that? Well, this could become this. No, it goes away. Okay. Yeah, so I guess don't delete that. But this... So we go through and we find out uh, like this four group, I almost want to split this four into like multiple fours. Mm -hmm. um, there are multiple loops here that that would look very much the same and share some code, but we should stop. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this is about to get nicer, though, right? Do you have that sense? No, you do not have that sense. <laughs> I see the repetition here, and I, I think it'll get somewhat nicer, but I don't think I'll love it when it's done. So 
Oh no, it's gonna get way, way nicer. Oh, it's gonna get beautiful. I, okay, can you, can you just put a note on 41 to do for our future selves? Make this beautiful. And just so you have an idea of what I just saw, mm -hmm. what I believe this is going to be is um, basically it's going to be become. Um, so so what, what is this whole thing creating? It's this. Um, so we have this I enumerable, right? Um, I think this is going to become. Check rows, check columns, check blocks. Actually, mm -hmm. it's not even going to be check rows. It's going to be check group. And then we're going to pass it, uh, the, the text rows, like the string rows and the Sudoku board dot get rows. And the puzzle. And then we're going to do that three times. So we're going to check the rows, check the columns, check the blocks. And that's going to be mm -hmm. the whole thing. I think that's what this is going to become. Okay. I believe, I believe that is the direction this code wants me to go. Um, yeah, but we'll do that next time. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about this whole, the unit test that we're writing here. Because I feel guilty about it. And it's weird for me to feel guilty about writing a unit test, right? But very much, what we just did there is not a real refactoring, right? It's, it's a rewrite. It's a micro rewrite. Yeah, what, is, what does guilt tell you? Can you uh, Google language of emotions guilt? You can't just Google your feelings. You can't just Google your feelings. <laughs> Embracing guilt and shame. Oh, guilt is shame. Huh. Funny. Uh, go click on that Clara McKel Mc McLaren thing. Carla McLaren. Ugh. So shame is you're doing something that breaks a social connection. Um, am, am I doing something that breaks a social connection? Maybe. I mean, definitely, I believe strongly that um, the difference between guilt. Okay, hold on. So, da 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 da, da guiltless, shameless. Scroll down. Guilt, is, shame is an emotion. Oh, interesting. You can't feel guilty. You can be guilty. I can be guilty. I am guilty. I am guilty of rewriting and not refactoring. <laughs> and that is where the shame lies. Uh, like, I wish I knew how to do that without doing the rewrite. And I don't think I do know how to do that at the moment. Um, like, I knew where I wanted to go. And I didn't know how to, to pull that out. So my question is, now that I've done it, can we retrospectively see how to pull it out so next time I don't have to be guilty? If I was to ask you to redo that as a refactoring instead of the rewrite, how would you do it? So I, I think part of what happened there was there's a loop that calculates a value based on the index. And so it does that for each index. Oh, and what you make a lookup table oh, of the results of that calculation. Oh, now I have like deep shame. Oh, okay, yeah. So that is exactly how you would do it. You would just clone the for, the big, the double for loop and have it get all your values, all your indexes. And then you'd have it go through and act on all those values. And then you'd have a list that creates a list of cells and a list of groups and a list of the other things, uh, rows, columns. And then you could pull that out into their own functions 
And then you could pull it out. Oh, man. All right. How fascinating. Well, yep. So I feel shame and guilt now. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, so the thing that, the, the insight you said that's just so profound, right? Because this is a really standard pattern that I see all the time, which is you have, um, you have a loop that does two things. One is functional and the other is, n is sort of non-functional, right? And that is the thing that I, I got confused in here because both of them are kind of functional, right? But you're still doing two things. And the way you separate a loop that does two things is you create two loops. The first loop puts everything into a list and then the second loop, like it does all the calculations and puts it into the list and the second loop acts on that list. And, and that's effectively what we're doing here, but we could have done it as an actual refactoring. We didn't have to write the tests uh, and we could have let the code just speak to us. Yeah. And I broke all of that. <laughs> In some ways, that's the uh, the whole the whole link thing is this idea, or also like in C plus plus code, yeah. um, there is a notion of algorithms. Just like it's like the uh, where and any they call them algorithms in STL and Boost. Yeah, and I have this repeating conversation with programmers who say, "Oh, this loop that searches the collection for the item that I want is perfectly plain. Why would you choose find?" instead of writing a plain loop yeah. and, and it's kind of the same thing it's that there's this like i don't know i don't know what else i want to say about that but no no that i feel like that's exactly right oh man all right what else happened today so we we drilled into one of the functions like we feel like the top level orchestration yeah. is good enough for now and so we moved into one of the parts yeah and so this pattern is just follow your nose not yeah not now um so the um so the pattern is follow your nose right where it's you find a smell and then you um, you, you, you follow your, you like whatever the thing is that's smelly in this case, the method was too long. And then you just start saying, okay, how do I clean it up? So it no longer smells. Yeah. And there's a, a question here about like, why did we decide, uh, to drill into this more? Like how, when, cause I don't know what our definition of done is. Yeah. We don't have a nice one, but the, there is this, there are two things that are missing right now that I feel I mean, like in, in the real world, our definition of time would be more clock-based. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, we're at the end of the day. Um, or, or the feature that we're trying to add, right? Um, and I feel like most likely if there is a feature we're trying to add right now, this w we're still not done. So, so we talked about mm -hmm. like being able to add different constraints. Mm -hmm. And right now this is going over a constraint but the constraints are hardwired into the solving strategy, which not necessarily a horrible thing. We could definitely pull it out, but I like the, the mask, that question. So if we go back to the code, this if statement right here, what that is trying to say is, is this cell, can this cell be a digit? Mm -hmm. Does it? Just so the this if, is asking just the, the if, not the, the second part is what okay. happens if it can be a digit. But can this cell be a one? That is what Does it adhere trying to, to the constraints? No, it's just saying the cell. It's just saying, can the cell at this in this constraint be a one? Mask is a complicated way of using digit. Right? Um, so it's saying like 401, can this be a one? 402, can this be a two? And if only one can be a two, then it says, well, this is the only one that can be a two, therefore it must be a two. 
Yeah. So this is part of the constraint. This is absolute. Uh, Here. Yeah. This it's is part of the constraint. It can only be one of these. Yeah. And the interesting thing about this constraint is it's it's not doing all the rows, all the columns, all the groups. It's doing the row, the first row, the first column, the first group, which is really unfortunate. Um, because <laughs> since we are order dependent, this might make it much harder to split than we want. There are, our tying to the order dependence is it's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. But anyhow, so the point being like, now we're in a place where we can start to, the mask is getting really minimized, right? And we're, pull, we're pushing it smaller and smaller and eventually it's gonna disappear. Cool. Um, but the, the thing that we've been doing to allow that is this concept of rows, columns, and blocks. You could split that up. I'm just, I'm just realizing like this four block splits really nicely into, mm -hmm. yeah, to really this just account. Part this plus is just this part. Yeah. You, you, well, you still have to count them all because of the way the code is done. You have to count them all three times, but it's still, yeah. Anyhow. Um, I don't think code anymore. Well, we'll come back and, and do that. Um, this is nice. Okay, so um, so I guess that's the thing that like, the question is like, is this code still bugging me? Is our definition of done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a uh, code that's going to bother me everywhere, including plenty of stuff that we wrote. Yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, I don't know. There, there's no reason we have to stop. Yeah. Um. The other thing that's very different about this is I feel like right now our domain understanding is really high. Like we're no longer, like there's parts where like I'm not understanding the math that's happening here, but I do understand what they're trying to achieve now. Where if we go back like to the beginning of this exercise, I had no idea what they were trying to achieve. Mm. Right. Also, we got rid of all the applesauces, which I really like. Um, I know we needed to pull them out. We didn't pull them out academically. Um, but for whatever reason we needed to, we obviously don't anymore, which is neat. Mm -hmm. um, I like that we time box that. There was also this interesting thing I thought happened where there's one part where I'm like, uh, oh, this is a mistake. And you were just like, yeah, delete. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you reverted that so quickly. Um, I'm curious how long you had thought, oh, we're in trouble right now. Well, there's a thing that happens a lot where you have an idea and I don't see it. And so I just go along with it until it reveals itself. And uh, the, until it reveals itself, I think this is garbage. And then it reveals itself. And I think, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> and I just have faith that, you know, the Wellens ideas will, will usually bear fruit and that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we ran into an interesting tooling issue today with the uh, approvals. You, you made a comment like, I don't want to fix this right now. And I 100% agree with that. Um, I just thought it might be interesting to look at the meta of what are you, what is, what is the thing that is telling you this is not the problem we should be fixing right now? Well, I was looking at the clock. About how much time we have left. Yeah. I feel like uh, that's almost never a great indicator. But I think that I in our field, all the time. I think in our field, we make the wrong choice about that a lot. We, we, it's, it's really easy to think oh, we're almost there. Yeah. Um, or I don't want to be, I don't want my momentum to be interrupted. Yeah. And I, I think we, we make that decision wrong 
uh, we, we should invest, like pause and invest more often than yeah. we currently do. And yet I felt like we had 15 minutes or so left and, and that's okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. All right. Well, should we, we try to finish this up next week? Uh, I don't know what finish means. We can do more next week. Let's do more next week. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're going to take a picture. Uh, I am going to take a picture. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to close the stream. <laughs>